This morning I posted a daily question about which side's landing gear on a helicopter touches down first when we're landing, all right? And it looks like 61% of people said left. Now there was a lot of comments in the comment section that were saying, well, sometimes it's right and sometimes it's actually both at the same time. While generally speaking, that's correct, we're gonna talk about why left is the most correct answer uh, for American and European helicopters. And then we'll discuss why it could be some of the other choices here. But understanding why the left is most likely the side that's gonna land first is gonna lead us to a lot more understanding of how helicopters work. All right, so here's our helicopter. and This is a front view. And we'll just say he's hovering at about five feet off the ground. Looking down from the bird's eye view, we can see that the main rotor disc here these four blades that are spinning are spinning counterclockwise. So for American and European helicopters, this is almost always the case, all right? The main rotor disc is gonna spin counterclockwise. Well, that's gonna have a profound effect on the rest of the helicopter. For instance, we look at this big brain Brett right here named Isaac Newton, and he was probably the smartest person who ever lived, but he came up with some laws of motion. The third law of motion is written here and you can read that, but really in simple form, it's for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The best example of this law is recoil from after firing a gun. So the bullet went out the front and you can see the slide is sliding back in the opposite direction, pulling the whole pistol up. So how does that apply to a helicopter? Well, as that main rotor disc is spinning counterclockwise, the rest of the helicopter is gonna wanna spin clockwise. And this is something we call the torque effect. The best way to visualize torque effect is with a power drill. For example, if you're driving a screw into a piece of wood, the drill bit is spinning clockwise, but it's putting a good amount of torque on the drill, forcing your hand to spin counterclockwise. And as you get to the end, you might feel the whole drill flip around counterclockwise on you. So how do we counteract this in a helicopter? Well, all you need to do is push on the left pedal and it's gonna bring our nose left and the tail right. And that is because of the magic of the tail rotor. Now, as we add left pedal, we're increasing the pitch of the blades on the tail rotor. And that is what forces the whole fuselage to spin counterclockwise, kind of like the main rotor system. Not only does that move the fuselage counterclockwise, but it's also adding torque to the whole system. But wait, we have another problem now. Since we increased the pitch on the tail rotor, we have also created a new thrust vector. And the thrust is shooting out to the left. Well, if we have thrust going left, that means the whole helicopter wants to slide right now. Remember, it doesn't want to yaw left or right because we've already corrected for that. But now we have a thrust vector that's pushing the whole helicopter to the right. And this is something we refer to as translating tendency. You probably heard this before if you're in uh, basic studies for learning to be a helicopter pilot. So translating tendency is just when the helicopter slides to the right because of compensating for the torque effect. We've increased the thrust on the tail rotor. So here's our helicopter. Again, this is from a front view, so the helicopter is facing towards us. It comes up to a hover, and it naturally wants to slide to the right. I know that looks left to you, but like I said, he's pointing at us. So in order to correct... We're going to add a little bit of left cyclic, tilt the rotor to the left, slide to the left. And now we're kind of hovering with our cyclic into the left side of the helicopter, right? This is a bit exaggerated. It's probably only going to be about two degrees, so it wouldn't look this drastic, but this is a good visualization. And then last thing, we just need to come straight down. So as we come down, the left skid's going to touch first. And as we continue to drop collective, slowly come down until the right skid touches the ground. And skids, if you're in a small helicopter, but if you're in a real man's helicopter, it's going to be landing gear or wheels in this case. Now, some people said, well, that's not always the case. You know, my little Robinson R44, sometimes the instructor is a little bit too heavy. And when we pick up, it's going to kind of slide to the right, you know, maybe tilt to the right. And we got a fat guy in the right seat. Might not always be the case. There's also somebody else who's talking about a Russian coaxial helicopter. So with this guy, these rotor systems are spinning in opposite directions of each other, thereby canceling out the torque effect, right? So you can see there's no tail rotor on this helicopter. And as it climbs up, 
it can basically adjust its heading either way it wants just by adding or decreasing torque to either of those rotor systems and no tail rotor is necessary. This is a similar case with an American Chinook. In this case it's just a tandem rotor helicopter but they're both both rotor systems are spinning in opposite directions of each other thereby negating the necessity for a tail rotor. Well all right I hope that was informative for you guys make sure you like and subscribe for more snackback videos. Snackback out.